Hello, I'm MC Toon. Who remembers Mark Steele? I'm a weapon systems expert. I'm making it up. I'm a conspiracy theorist. It was only two years ago when the Gateshead gunman was serious news. Do not believe a single word I say. That was then, and today he's not so much. I'd mostly lost interest in Mark because I was having so much uh, fun arguing with the Flat Earthers. They seemed more relevant, more honest, more vibrant, and more in touch with today's science than Mark Steele ever was. <laughs> We'd all forgotten about him and his desperate attempts to stay relevant. Mark doesn't even get invited to speak in central London anymore, and even Kate Shemirani, you know, the toxic nurse in a natural world. My own children are really angry with me. She's higher profile than Mark. Mark used to speak on stage in central London. But now when he tries to speak at a truther event, even as in his own hometown, he has to physically steal the microphone from the organizer's hand, and then he gets booed off the stage. I hope that's it. Love you all. All right, I'll just wrap up then, everyone. So, just to remind you, I'm not trying to stop me speak. These people here. Do you guys want to hear Mark speak? Hands up if you want to see Mark. If you want to hear Mark speak. Right, Mark, I'm sorry, there's not enough hands. The, the best he can do these days is the Sutherland's Hotel, a low-end pub in Gateshead, run by a gullible fan. I don't think he gets paid for this gig, but he does beg for donations, which I'm told he rarely gets. Mm, poor guy. You see, So you see, Mark just isn't relevant anymore. But something happened recently that reminded me that Mark still existed. A short video made by one of his faithful disciples. Well, his only disciple, Kim Tate. Hello. Kim tried to make a rebuttal video <laughs> to a video I made about a year ago with Raynard Wilson. It's one of the most bizarre things I've ever watched. Because even if it tries to debunk stuff I said, it really doesn't. It simply repeats some of Mark's most awkward and embarrassing moments. The great thing about Kim is even though he's a true believer in Mark Steele, he has a habit of asking Mark the questions that he least wants to have asked of him. Mark, are you qualified to talk about radio frequency weapon systems? You know what, Kim? That's a really insightful question. What exactly are Mark's qualifications to talk about 5G, bioweapons, vaccines, and all the other nonsense he talks about? Here's a clip of Mark's answer. Uh, well, I would think so, uh, considering I've got about 20 patents that mitigate the weapon on the battlefield. No, Mark, you don't have 20 patents. You have one that was registered multiple times that you didn't even invent yourself. But let's hold on a bit. To really give Kim Tate an answer to his question, we need to go way back in time to when it all started. Let's see how qualified Mark Steele is. I've worked exclusively on research and development projects over my full life, apart from the four years I spent as an engineer and apprentice. The research I've been involved with has been diverse and centered mainly across the energy sector. I has some 35 years uh, of experience in um, weapon systems, energy weapons. 35 years research in projects uh, in the energy sector. Oh, of course you are, Mark. That's what you want people to believe, which is why you told that interviewer to say that stuff for you. But is it really true? Are you really an expert? Very expert. <laughs> but when he's asked to provide his credentials, he's less than forthcoming. Normally, Mark claims that all of his expertise is covered by the Official Secrets Act. I can't tell you about that because it's covered on the Official Secrets Act. Or simply dodge the question. So, Mark, do you have any expertise at all? Very, very expert. Yeah, Mark, we heard you the first time. Not only does he claim to have 35 years of energy sector research, he simultaneously claims he's been developing weapon systems for over 30 years. I've been developing weapon systems for over 30 years. Unlike Mark, 
we can do some basic arithmetic and see if his claims are plausible. Now, the first time I found where Mark claims to have 35 years of energy uh, sector expertise was in the description of a YouTube video, and it was published in 2018 when Mark was 58 years old. If Mark had worked continuously in the energy sector, then it means he would have started professional research in the energy sector at the age of 23. That's pretty young for a research position. But we know for sure this didn't happen. Nothing in Mark's life is what he claims. Who could forget this story Mark told us about when he was 11 years old attending Front Street Primary School? When I was 11 year old, uh, you know, I was basically the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the cleverest guy in the school. And I won an award to, uh, to get, uh, a, uh, let's say, an award for obviously being top of the class. Even if Mark is telling the truth here, this bizarre story from young Mark is probably the last time he did well at school. And this is uh, perhaps the proudest educational achievement of his life. Skip forward five years and Mark's schooling isn't going very well. Nothing seems to be making any sense. In fact, I was a terror at school. And when I got to like 11, 12, 13, I mean, I was hard work because I knew the stuff they were telling me was incorrect. In fact, my physics exam, I just got up and walked out. In case you're having trouble with Mark's Geordie accent, he's saying that he walked out of his high school physics exam because he thought he knew more than his teachers and the people who wrote the exam. Mark is probably talking about his CSE exams. In the 70s, these were the exams that a British 16-year-old would take at a normal comprehensive school. After that, they were free to quit school. And that's exactly what Mark did. Um, kids who did well in, in their 11 plus exams, they would get invited to do O levels instead of the CSEs that Mark probably ditched. These kids might continue to their, to continue their education and do A levels. Kids who got good grades at A levels might get a chance to attend university and become real researchers. But the kids like Mark Steele who walk out of their physics exam, those kids, they have to walk a much harder path in life. I think it's clear that Mark's sense of entitlement was fully formed as a teenager. Mark couldn't stand the thought that he wasn't good enough. So in a classic narcissist move, he blamed his failures on others. According to Mark, it's not him that's wrong. It's actually Georg Ohm. Joseph Henry, Michael Faraday, and James Clerk Maxwell. They are the real goofballs. He's blaming his own failures to understand high school physics on history's greatest scientists. So what did Mark do after he left school? He set out to learn a trade, a fine thing to do. He became an apprentice at a manufacturing company. But I'll save that for next time. I'll cover Mark's journey from Apprentice to Ex-Con. That's right. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification when this comes out. Maybe in the next episode, we'll get to hear Mark uh, about his extensive experience in the energy sector and how he's qualified to talk about 5G vaccines and anything more complicated than shooting a teenage girl in the head. Or maybe not.